HSC Grand Final live from Escape Portal. It's w Williton versus Applecross B. So uh, we're getting into pick and ban. First ban Shen from Applecross side and LeBlanc from Willow. So LeBlanc is a really strong assassin right now, and the banning end up probably for Exiled. Um, Applecross's star mid laner and Shen affects the map really well uh, overall and is a really strong pick for both top and support currently. So the Kai'Sa ban aimed at Peanut Butt. Uh, Kai'Sa's a uh, really strong AD carry currently with With pro probably hmm. so ca so these bands from Willow are really targeting um, Exiled, who is it currently in Challenger. So it's 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 a good play for um from Willow to ban out the strong mid lane assassins to to stop Exiled's impact on the game. Yasuo banned out by. Applecross and Evelyn for the last ban from Willow. Let's see what the first pick is. Evelyn is probably a comfort pit, com comfort pick for their jungler, uh, more than a meta pick. So Lulu, first pick for Applecross. This could be a mid lane Lulu, but I'd be very surprised if it is a mid lane Lulu because that's more of a supportive type champion. That and from what I've heard f of Exiled, that he is more of a carry style um, player who wants to win his lane and just roam and kill uh, and s gank his side lanes. So first pick Varus for Peanut Butt on the side of Willow. Uh, Varus, a really strong AD carry currently, w that corrupting chains, good lockdown, and a Xinzhou jungle, most likely. Hmm. The poppy pick onto, on the Applecross side, this 
should be poppy top into a blind poppy top which is all right uh, I'm not too sure on the what matchups poppy is actually good into she is I don't um, really think she's a great blind pick for top lane but it might have might be just poppy jungle that that's a possibility And the Morgana for Willow, for Mushroom Zack. It's gonna get locked in. So now phase two, phase two bans. Uh, so Willow wants to ban out the, the jungle and support pools, possibly. Uh, no, not jungle support, sorry. Jungle and mid, yes. so keep banning out those mid lane assassins. Uh, LeBlanc, Katarina, Akali. Akali, a very strong pick currently, can just one-shot you at level 6. A massive power, str power spike at level 6 for Akali. Get that off the hands of Exiled. Uh, Oriana ban coming out. Oriana, that ult can affect a team fight. Just turn a team fight, a well placed ult. Which Applecross clearly don't want. So the Tristana are more, can push, I think. Mm. So it's a. So the bot lane of Applecross should be Tristana Lulu against a Varus Morgana. Hmm. Do not deny Zed gets banned out. This should be Irelia mid. Irelia isn't really a strong top lane pick currently. I think they'll put Willow Andy on a good tank f to just soak up pressure on the top lane. It's a Teemo hover on... Uh side of Applecross, but they lock in Kane. Oh. Alright. So, if this does get locked in, then I guess it is a Lulu mid. Which is surprising, because... Oh, maybe not. A oh, Riven. So that would be Riven mid against the Irelia mid. That's gonna be, uh... Very strong, very interesting matchup. And the on, on into Poppy. I don't, I'm not f super sure how good that matchup is. Oh, act, the Maokai. Maokai is a strong engage, a straight tank, and. Super solid for holding up the top lane. So it is Riven mid for Exiled, which is a pick I, I would have thought he would play, as he's a pretty skilled player and he wa he would want to um, just dominate his lane and roam super early to get his other lanes ahead. As we are getting into the game now, we so it once we get into the loading screen, we can see the um, runes. But this matchup currently, uh, what what uh, Willow would want to do right now is I uh, engage with the Maokai and. Um, that Irelia probably wants to get into the back line and then v Varus uh, get get that Varus uh, doing ahead with Peanut, but
and hmm. the side of Willow has more has better single target damage with that Zin Zhao and Aurelia. Uh, so, the so Riven mid is an interesting pick, really, uh, off meta, currently, it's, I'm not too sure how good it is inside, into the Aurelia, but the Aurelia is a really strong pick, uh, currently, in the mid lane, we, I saw, um, was it Poe Belter? Yeah, Poe Belter, uh, in, on, playing it last night on the uh, NALCS, so, really solid comp from Willow side, and an interesting draft, I'd say, for Albacross, not too sure about the Kane pick, I'm never too sure about Kane. Hi there guys, my name is Temper, sorry about that, some of us have day jobs. Hi there, so it's nice to meet you, your name is? Um, Lucky, or oh, you can call me Lobster. Nice to meet you mate. So yeah, you were mentioning the Riven pick on blue side here. Uh, it is very interesting, the, the thing about blue side's pick is that they're all AD, they're all AD damage. Yeah. And they have, and on red side you see the, the really solid front line of Malco there, so all he has to do is prioritise some early armour, so you get uh, a random into Sunfire Cape, and then you just become this unstoppable monster that no one on the on, on their team can kill. The other obvious flaw in uh, Blue Side's team is obviously the lack of ranged engage, especially into the Xin Zhao. If Xin Zhao or Red Side ever don't want to pick a fight, Xin Zhao has the ultimate to disengage, and Blue Side has to run away, because there's nothing they can do to then re-engage a fight. Red side, however, has lots and lots of different tools to win. So they have uh, they have the Maokai ultimate, the the Varus ult, the Morgana Q. They have lots and lots of ways to pick fights that they really, really want to take. So it's interesting to see how how Blue Side play around these these large cooldowns of Red Side. See if they can then pick the fights that they want with maybe a Tristana going in or a Poppy Flash E. Yeah. Uh, we're getting into the game now. So. Uh, So just as we load into screen here, it won't take too long. We'll just get into a little bit more analysis. So this obviously is the high school e-league Western Australian finals here, sponsored by and ho sponsored and hosted by Escape Porter here, down at 1359 Albany Highway, just in Cannington, just by a carousel. So really awesome event here, guys. So if you're ever in town, make sure you come down and check it out. they got really awesome facilities. Yeah. But getting back into the game. I'm excited to see this Aurelia versus River matchup. That's that can go either way. It's really, really skill matchup. Obviously, it is favoured early yeah. in Aurelia because simply because she has a lot more consistent mobility than yeah. the River. Plus, then she also has a lot more CC. Well, also, uh, basic um, skill-wise, I, I think uh, just uh, this isn't professional league, so some. Some players are just better than others, so I don't know. I, um, Riven might just outskill Irelia mid game, but just because of his um, raw skill. He's so Riven right now is in currently in Challenger, I'm pretty sure, and he, uh, we, we'll see if he can just carry the game for his team. Yes, so obviously we have to talk about individual skill gaps between certain players. But it's exciting to see how they will adapt yeah. to this obvious yeah. skill gap in mid lane. And we'll see if Red Side is able to accurately play around the obvious one-man carry style of Blue Side yet. They actually so. have two people in Challenger. Yes. Even better. Yeah. Right. So we see here Blue Side just opting for the four-man stack, seeing if anybody decides to walk up. Red Side, very intelligently, however, staying really far away. They're not really looking for any early game shenanigans, just looking to get the Zin Zhao to level two, and then looking to empower him to fight and to really punish this game. Yeah. Um, what I would find is the Xin is, is better in the 1v1, so he might be able to invade more than the Kane, but the Kane has more mobility to move around the map and maybe get more vision around the map um, than the Xin with that um, uh, 
Is it Ghost Rock? Or... Yeah, the Kane. Yes. So yeah, the Kane is fairly useful. You can get a lot of deep vision with it. But Xin Zhao at the moment, especially with how Scuttlecrap is, is just he is one of the best, if not the best, jungler on this patch. If you, if Kane ever finds Xin Zhao level two or level three, the Kane will die. Just because of how strong Xin Zhao is. Once he gets access to his challenge and might, he will put kids quite firmly in the bin. So it's, it's interesting to see if the Kane respects the Xin Zhao and, and is able just to wait until level 6 where he then becomes a lot, a lot well, more powerful. As we see here, the wet noodle fight happening up in top lane. Poppy hitting level 2 before Maokai. Really Maokai not really up. caring too much. Yeah. He's got about a billion health plus and he also has a dropping pot. pot. Plus his passive, he will be full health in the next two waves. Morgana hits the stun bot lane and the uh, positive trade for red side. So the Varus Morgana bot lane, or as you see here, Xin uh, flash is forced, and that will be first blood going over to Blue Side. Really, really nicely done there by Blue Side. Xin Zhao just not respecting, just not respecting the the Riven's ability to, to look at the mini map and just walk down and capitalize on a two v one there. Really, really disrespectful by the the Xin Zhao overextending for that top side. Yeah. As we see, even CS in bot lane, the top lane. CS disparity, however, is very large. We see a 10 CS lead already, and obviously with first blood going over to blue side Riven here. There's a fight mid lane. Arilla there is, is Ignite down. is down for Riven, and that will be a kill going over to Arilla. Very, very nice there. She will be able to also increase her CS lead here. We see Varus just trading onto his owner. That's heal blown for Ignite, as we see Ignite blown on Lulu as well. 2 4 one summon a trade in favour of Orisa. Very, very nicely done there by the, by the bot lane to it. There. Tristana, Tristana will be forced to back, and, and that will allow Varus to, to shove this wave into tower and force Tristana to miss out on a lot, and a lot of crucial early XP. Not something that I touched on earlier in the in the draft, but Tristana is a, is a is an ADC that really, really needs time and items to be able to function yeah. correctly. Varus is quite the opposite. Varus is quite the opposite. He's really, really strong, just sitting there, more than happy to sit on base damage here. So as we see, we just got a little bit of a techn technical difficulty because why wouldn't we? This is just the way we love it, and that should just about fix it. Here we go. So there we go, back into it. Left. Interesting to see here that Malkai has managed to equalize that CS lead. However, it it looks a little bit larger than it is now simply because Poppy is waiting for that wave to crash into the tower. She will be about five or six, uh, uh, about a wave or so ahead of us. Again, both of them not really. As we say, this Kane is looking for the Malkai. Malkai still has much and she'll be able to get out of this really nice flash there. Poppy really, really low. Unfortunately, the Malkai couldn't get the, the kill there, but nonetheless, really nice to execute by Malkai. It's out of here. See here, Riven. So Riven and Aurelia just going back and backwards and forwards in the middle. And of course, both of them having a kill. However, Riven, ha Riven having first blood means that she does have access to a lot more kills. Hence the double long sword. Uh, so what? From what you said about um, Barrett being stronger early, and as well as Aurelia being stronger early, I think Willow wants to um, try and get as much far as, as far ahead as possible in the early games so they can like yes. use so red side does have a little bit of a scaling deficit in comparison to the so they scale badly but in comparison to the Tristana they do they, they be able to be able to be able to be so it's really interesting to see if they can run into Tristana early and put her behind so that their team is not empowered and not allowed to reach the to not, not allowed not allowed to reach the see Kane just showing up just getting some back in those fights. Oh, and she will go all the way for the kill. Really, really nice in that there. The Kane, interestingly enough, holds on to Flash. Maybe he thought he was dead regardless, but just disrespecting the damage that can come out of that, the level 6 early. So, unfortunate there. Riven is missing a whole bunch of CS, plus he is now on that kill down on the earlier. So, we look to see how Red Side will play around this early, this early pressure. And we see here, they are getting the first round of damage, which is a Ocean Dragon. Nice pick up there. Ocean Dragon is really good. Very, very good. manages to back with the team called the Unclear and they both split off. Varus manages to live and Morgana manages to live as well. Really, really nice. Blue side, unfortunately not having the heat box to be able to 
focus on the deck. Okay, as Malkai solos a poppy. Really nicely done there. Again, people holding on to flashes longer than they maybe should, disrespecting the damage that can come out of their opponents. It's only a five minute pull deck, guys, just slow it. it, yeah. it you losing flash is definitely worth yeah. you living and not losing it. Definitely. Okay. As we see here, we've got about 1k gold leader over on the red side with no turrets being destroyed yet. However, we do have that option. As we say, that Varys on the is done. She does have flash value to that. She will get out very, very nicely done there. Flash will be favorable to Varys. Really close to there by the red side behind. This will, it will then force this out and then just recall. Really nice back there. Really, really nicely done there. Like just forcing this stuff. As we say, Grimmon is going in. Here. Really nicely done there. Really not having a sister to hold for having you not, and then she will kill the roof. Wow. Really, really nicely done there. Neither of those, neither of the mid laners had access to their ultimate, but Aurelia just having that boost down without her allows her to then get to, to then kill the roof. Plus, having, uh, having the CS lead and then also the kill lead on the game as well, really putting her in a situation, allowing her to then shut down. side actually has a really strong vision line on to the river, with top and the spot lane. Yeah, but so blue side on, on their bottom side, so the blue side, uh, southern side of the jungle has a nice defensive line. Mid lane, lane push, and then they've also got a little bit of the river, um, making sure that Aurelia can't then walk down through the river, making sure that on these games are really back over. Their top side wards are only in river, which is a really, really, as we say, it's Aurelia and river. Ruben getting hit by the river. This is Aurelia ultimate missing clover and this should be the end of the fight there. Unfortunate there from Aurelia expecting the oh, as we say there's Ruben and Aurelia going back in for Ruben opting him back in for the CS. And they do manage to live however. Really, really confusing as to why the uh As we said, Poppy is soloing here. Malkai, Malkai having access to that, about to take it. Should be able to get to the with access to the past of the world. Spanish is to save his flash there. So, really nicely done. Really patiently played. As we said, the Zinzel will come down with Poppy. Flash is falling down with Poppy. Malkai does have access to flash. This should be able to Really, really nice enough from one side. Nice communication. As we say, this Aurelia looking to solo really again. However, Kane is here in Quickly turns it towards him. And the Aurelia's flash is forced, and then Aurelia will get shut down by the way. That was a very big shutdown. It was a very, very large shutdown here. It allowed Ruben to get back into the game in a big, big way. The, yeah. the kill also going on with Ruben also allows them to, to then be able to force objectives, to be able to force what is to force the next direction. So, interesting to see here how the Ruben is nice to play with the Varys, obviously, Varys is quite, has up quite a substantial amount of CS on to this one about 25, but as we say, this pain does get hit by money, hit by the Varys of the position, and the pain is to see more people on the side, walking by the side, and then the pain going down to Varys, really, really nice down there from the side, interesting as to why Kane decided to ult then, to ult into the fight as they had no vision on any of the other members of the I think he was just trying to stay alive as long as he can. Because if he didn't pop it, his ult, he might have not lived. People are just holding on to their flashes so much. Oh, you see, he can't die. Oh, wow, he had flash. <laughs> people are just disrespecting the damage that can come out of the opposing team. And, and, and they should just be, be playing around their flash. Only going to the flash, and then obviously, you know, just go and disrespect your leave here. So, Varys here up to the kills now, and then 30 CLs on the team. Really unfortunate for the for the blue side for the blue side tour here. Barrett allowing himself to, to get really really big and it looks and it looks as if he is going to go with the with the blade first rather than pronounce. It's it's not a horrible first item, but given how far they were ahead, I would personally prefer to see a uh, a rage blade here, yeah, allowing him to get the W seeing as blue that's just not a problem really have it. Mid lane is going to go down to all Kane, interestingly enough, besides the scumbag to kill, taking the, 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 the Ruben here. So, we'll 
Five kills now? Yes, the five to one ribbon is looking to put this game quite firmly on his shoulders and carry his team to be proud and that the red side do have access to the tools that can deal with the ribbon engagement really, really well. So they have the Morgana kill for the ultimate, they have they have the stuns coming out of Aurelia, the slow and the stun from Barry, not to mention the CC bot in top lane. So if if Ruben decides to jump in without making sure that they don't have the red side have a blown their turn, she can find that she goes from a hundred to a real quick. So yeah. just Ruben needs to play around these these large cooldowns and, and make sure that she can then jump in at the red cost when she's supposed to as we see this. If you're thinking that it's a 1v1, since our should be just again anytime soon, making sure it's a super one. As we see here, Poppy, oddly enough, still fighting and as we see the out, since they've decided to pop out very, very much of this main here, and this will be one kill. Amazingly enough, Red Side able to snatch it back and manage to kill Poppy. As we see here, Kane will go down, double kill over to the Really, really questionable again. Again, Kane dying with his with these big summons up with his flash up again. That's the third time he's died, the third time that he's had flash up. He just needs to be able to flash out of these out of these skill shots and making sure that he can keep him something. As you see here, what I did was make it right in the face of Red Side. That will be a very easy stunner up. As you see here, Red Side looking to fight the TV one in the top lane here. Sits out managing to leave the lead match and then Malco will just run away as well. TP then blown from Poppy and Fox is really nice to see him. Uh, uh, opting to overstay and should. Oh, uh, let's just get out. And he should not capitalize in on these, on these overextensive virus. Riven obviously having access to the SW. Could have simply been here in Malco, but opting to play safe. As we see here, Lulu deciding to greet the CS and then Barris will just snipe him in. Really, really easy kill there for the Barris. And this should be our going to go on the next wave. Yeah, that was just on um, not respecting the damage. Um, they, um, 
play the play, yeah. Play the after going check. So, on hit barracks here with the lethal tempo, does have a lot of damage, especially with the combined passive from play the wrong kick. Not to mention then the new W, the WQ, the damage, it does a lot of damage, especially for these low health. So, a little interestingly enough, it's like, yes, we picked up none of it and it ended up paying So, uh, I think it's just a, a lack of understanding by the players about the amount of damage that can come out of their opponents. Red side now really taking control of the map frequently right enough. Yeah. So, we obviously have this the second Drake secure here. As we see, now they're popping right over Make sure that the Tristana isn't allowed to leak reach her late game spots. As we see here, Rayside should be looking for a certain end on the As we say, this Barrett is managing to hit the Griffin Slash and the Tristana is fine. Going back in again, Barrett is not missing every game. As we say, this Kane ultimately on to another game. The Tristana is jumping in on the back of the game. The Kane is jumping in to secure the kill. The Tristana is hitting the reset on the game. Everybody looking to die here, and we see a 3 for 1 trade in favor of Redside. Really, really nicely done here from Redside, just, just fighting with their gold lead, with their, their big advantage that they've been able to score. And Blueside just disrespecting the fact that they're behind right now. They need to just wait, they need to be able to turn on the deep field and protect their hidden towers. And then, when Tristana has two or three items, they're looking to just really fight, really punish the, the lack of scaling on Redside here. That was a nearly a really good turn from blue side, but red side, um, the tankiness from Malfoy like, kept, um, And that's one of down. the big flaws coming out of the blue side, is they're all AD. So they all have only single fight, single damage. It's, it's all AD, it's all coming out, and it's all realistically at this point in the game, coming out of Ripley. If they can then shut them down, they'll be able to run them. They'll be able to see the first thing you can find out of them. So if they are able to force Riven out of a fight, and walk, 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 Malkai can just walk in and do whatever he wants because there's no one that can deal with these tanks now. So Redside understanding that well, I'm looking to really, really punish the People obviously looking to jump in and get recessed, and it was just not enough to be able to go through, to tear through the Malkai helicopter. As we see here, he does he is sitting on the right side of the and frozen and really, really asserting his dominance down here on the 0 and 4 pocket. As you see here, it is a very, very large job. You can see 6k in 20 minutes. You can see here, really Riven is getting caught out in the middle of her region. Probably in shock looking at what happened in the play. Aurelia's stun does miss her. Aurelia ultimate manages to hit the region, as well as in that but this is a very dead one. Since our other game, as we see another round, looking to start a very big video in the mid lane. Paracos is missing. Malfoy ultimate making sure to hit the middle there and this should be Lulu going down. Really nice and easy, just capitalizing on the lack of vision on the side of the game. Making sure that they can always get the fight, which in this stage of the game is every single one. As we see here, things are coming down on the road. It has just spawned and they do have enough tanky stats to be able to take the combined damage with the counter. Making sure that everybody was on balance and making sure that everybody was on pace when they were out just to respond to them. Making sure that they are in a really, really good position to be able to carry it. That was a really good Baron spawns, they just take it and now they have a massive push. Um, they push it and they're going to come and I think if they, if they find a good engage, they can just take it. Red 
inside really, really looking for certain anomalies and just control every single aspect of the map here. Making sure that they're getting lots of vision down to the Kai on the bot side and not sieging with the team. It was, it was unfortunate his TP was very close to the point where it's only about 15 seconds of training again. But the call should have been enough, I should have ripped with the rest of his team. If Marco is there for the entirety of that fight, that's it. There's no one, there's, there's just no one that can deal with the, the help that's coming out of Marco right now, especially now that he has a grapple with it. Making sure the Rivet is not allowed to heal, so that death dance mode just, just being negated by a thousand gold lives in Marco. If they really wanted someone on the side lane, it would have been better for like the Irelia or the um, Zin, which uh, because the the I think uh, the tankiness of Maokai and then just the damage from Varus is enough to take any team fight from blue side. Varus does have a lot of damage, but as we saw last fight, Varus is very susceptible to being blown up by these targets that really want to jump in. <laughs> Just to assume 
birthday nominees and just let Mount go for over. As we see here, Mount Kai is going to go for over. That's the access to this TV. Either they let Malco get a whole bunch of free inhibitor tower, or they mean inhibitor tower will just fall. They, they need to make a choice and they need to do it now. This is the Ruben has been opting to match the Malco here, and this is really interesting as to why they were sent Ruben. Ruben's the only person that can deal with Malco. We say this guys of course we will get back into game very very shortly but up until then we'll leave you with some tunes and we'll have a go
Don't make me strangle this track. Call me Jack the Ripper on this one. Don't give a shit to be known. Just as long as I don't get pissed on. 40 acres and a mule. Plus my kids, the reason I live for. Make more than just ends me. I don't never like to live piss poor. So I'ma go in like Logan. Make shit from scratch. I know it sounds like broken records, but I'm right on track. So ain't no stopping. Raise the volume. Keep the party knocking. Fight club in this bitch. Best for me, we get them all hopping.
the cane can't really go up there and expect to get kills. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of confused. The the whole strategy with globals is that you go to the source of the global because he obviously can't alt himself. He can't change a 1v1 into a 2v1 the same way he can change a, a 2v2 to a 3v2 if he ults bot lane. So the cane really was looking to go top and their whole red side was looking to shut down the global of Shen. But with the Nasus, they're kind of just conceding that and hoping that Nasus, that, that Nasus and the game goes long enough that he's just able to get 400 stacks and he's just able to 100 to 0 the guys are in two queues. So we'll see if blue side is, uh, allows the game to go on for long enough for that to happen. As we say this, we'll let you get back to the tunes. We'll get back into the game very shortly. Won't keep you too long. to see the progression between the two teams during the series to see if they decide to do any different early game shenanigans if any at all. But I, I am very interested to see if blue side, oh sorry now red side, opt for a different strategy rather than just stacking that mid bush, which they are. They're 30 seconds to until you catch out this karma who's just sitting there unaware that the game is coming to her. Also said flash out, really really nicely done there. And, and that's the summon it down for one basically for free on the side of, on, on red side just for the sake of 40 seconds there Nasus will still be able to get the top lane quite fine not miss any CS or XP so Karma Karma just blowing her flash from the early game so it, Karma's flash not necessarily very likely but nonetheless it, it's another option for Kane to go and get quite early and, 
and get a kill while he was in the flash. Which could, uh, with the Varus uh, being stronger in the early game, then the Karsa can maybe lead to a snowball from the uh, Varus. So, we, as we look on the map now, Shen doing some deep warding into uh, Kane's red buff as Kane is starting Raptors first. So the Kane Raptors start isn't that uncommon. It gives him a lot of HP plus with the Calibre. He's able to do it very quickly and stay very, very healthy, especially with the, with the big AOE you use. We see an army bubble landing on Karma. The Karma ult is coming down, managing to trade back fairly well, but Karma is definitely on the losing side. See here, Shen just walking up, looking to trade with Nasus early. Looks to look for the Shen level to really, really punish the Nasus. Nasus not having a lot of kills, not having any kills before he gets lots of stuff. Shen, however, once he gets access to the W and the E, making sure the Nasus does come back and forces him. It, it's really interesting to see that Shen, a champion you would normally associate with having kill pressure, really can weigh a lot of kills. Yeah, definitely. And with uh, full pressure and a global orb that can affect the whole map. As you see here, Nas is just eating damage on the top of the Kaisa. Then he can dodge out the top of the really down. Flash forced out by Kane. Glad to see that he's using it. With the slide. Yeah. But that will be... That will be the Kindred now gets to go on the top topside. Maybe uh, forcing a flash from Nas. Ari also used, used her flash during that um, fight. So that could be a uh, point of um, weakness for the mid lane, for uh, Kane to maybe get mid. He could, so Kane could look to capitalize on the on the Ari flash, so if once Ari hits level 6, he then doesn't need the flash to see access to the 3 dashes from him. But look to see if Kane can make anything happen from that early game shit, from those early game shit, I guess. As you see, a fairly large CS lead for the Shen here, as it crashes into the Look to see how much he, he can catch and look to see how many new stacks he was able to get from the As we see here, bot lane just taking the poke after having their lane shoved in to the tower by Kaisa Khan. Nasus is dropping a little bit of space here as Ari is winning the early break battle with the one, as is expected. As we see, mid lane is just going back to not looking for too much in the early game happening without the jumpers or without Shen having access to his ultimate. Really look to see where that first Shen ultimate goes. Really look to see if they can force the premium in the ultimate. And then look to see if the Shen ultimate presence is in the ultimate. As you see, Shen taunting into the mini wave, still winning that trade, showing you the raw power that Shen early damage has. With the percentage health that we is it's really, really it's nice to see that the, the, the shed is using that to use it. I'm as yet as it is pushing forward. Really asserting his dominance over this pop up. Uh, we might have not mentioned it, this on stage before, but uh, Apple costed a lane swap up for. As you see, that's going in and not having access to Flash Shen, unwilling to follow Flash there. A little bit questionable, but he's playing a lot more defensive. Uh, and LeBlanc going in, and we'll get first blood on Ari. Ari just not respecting the LeBlanc damage that can come out from the distortion there. As Flash followed by into there and securing a trade for her. This will be very interesting if Kane opting not to go for that. Smart there from the Kane. The Shen obviously having lane priority, the Nasus are just recorded. If, if they continue fighting, Shen walks down, and that is a very really intelligently played there from the Kane. And ultimately a one for one trade in the favor of Red Side as they got the first blood. However, due to the juice CS is the blue side is having it. It does have an early gold event of about 400. Like you said during the draft, that NASA's pick was really a strange pick because of how much pressure this Shen actually has. As you see the Shen right now. Does opt to use his flash However, the Shen, the Shen probably would be if he had held on to that side. But that's just playing a bit more cautiously, and that's not the worst thing. As you can see, vision just being cleared here by Red Side on the bottom side, the bottom half of the map, making sure that they, the blue side isn't allowed to take this early Infernal Drake for free. They're making sure that they will always.
is Moen, if Gidru decides to jump in and try to start this dragon. I'm really interested to see how this bot lane plays out. I saw a very small gold lane over the, over the Varus here, but with less early game stacks in the Varus, I'm really interested to see if she's allowed to hit her Storm Razor and her Zeal items, and, and then be allowed to just work in. So I'm really interested to see if the next level of the bot lane is able to capitalize on the very squishy Isa and the other one. There's a reason, there's, there was probably a reason why LeBlanc was banned out in the first game, um, as Exalt, a very mechanically strong player comparatively um, in, in this match, can, uh, very interesting what, uh, to see what he can do in the game. The Shen going for team at first year is really, really intelligent. He's just forcing the Nasus to lose even more and more. It's just empowering him to get an even larger draw. And having access to his level 6, now I'm really looking for the kid to go to, to look for, to look for these, these engages that you normally wouldn't want to engage on. But obviously with the Shen shield, you're just allowing your team to take this bad engage, eat it up with the shield, and then turn it into a full just back to the board here. Guys, I'm managing to dodge out of the Nami bubble. Nami, slash, and heal, force out of the bot lane. The only the ignite of Karma. Really nicely done there. Really, really nicely done there from the bot side, from Blue side. As I see, Kane did show top side, just throwing out an heal for Shen. Shen able to easily sidestep. Kane just showing more presence than anything, however, Shen understanding that he is untouchable at this point with Nasus being down nearly 20 CS. This vision line from the uh, side is trying to keep the, uh, LeBlanc in the mid lane. As we see, Ari and LeBlanc going at it again. And that is Ignite Force from LeBlanc. LeBlanc, LeBlanc just That's accepting cool. her fate. They had access to, didn't have access to her flash or to Ignite there. All of her spell rotations were down. She just accepted her fate rather than rather than try to escape here, so I mean, a little bit disheartening for the LeBlanc, but even so, Ari managing to pick up a solo kill there onto, the, onto her lane, a really, really nicely done there. Ari still showing that even though she made a mistake earlier on, she's able to capitalize on the mistakes that LeBlanc made. Yeah, yeah start with that. Uh, As we see, Shen and Nas is going at it again. It's just a farm fest really up here. No one can really touch anyone, especially with the Shen only having two-thirds health, but I'm really, really interested to see Shen's level 7 now. The bot lane is level 6. I do have access to the Kai'Sa ultimate down there. I really, really want Kai'Sa to, to ultimate, get the shield from that, and then also the shield from the shield, giving the Shen free access to the back line. So I'm really, really interested to see if they use this to then force the tower down bot lane. We did mention it before as they were fighting on going on. But there is the Infernal Drake did go over to Blue Side in the midst of all of that fighting. So even though the gold lead is only 700, it will continue to work out just because of the Infernal. As we see here, Shen Ultra Blown defensively on top of the Kindred Ultra. That's a is, lot of utility burn. Which is, it's a lot. It's, it's the two crucial for them. So you don't want to burn at the same time. So as we see, the lane is being jumped on. Karma will go down to Varus. Varus flashes onto the Karma. Kaisa ultimate coming down, but Kaisa simply not having, not having the damage to kill the Varus here. The Shen ultimate being blown really, really told the Red Star bot lane that they could play aggressive, that they could finally, that they could finally kill this Kaisa in this Karma because they had no safety from the other lanes. We see Ari really intelligently dashing backwards towards the Karma, and this will be another, another solo kill. kill from Ari. Really nicely done here. Unfortunately, Ari does go down. Really, really nicely done there by Ari. LeBlanc managing to get hurt just on the last couple of ticks of the time. Ari not having access to her Q to be able to heal off. As we see, TP is blown by Nasus. Just looking to get back to lane. Shen now having access to his. Look to see. I, I really, really want the Shen to empower the guy to take these bad fights. So as you say, Shen Wing late. Taking two free cues here from the Shen and then Kane will jump over the position. This may just be addition and it will be Kane flashing over. He does have access to his ultimate and opting to give the kill to the Nasus. He's nicely executed there by Red Side. In the meantime, he did manage to secure a counter. Kindred will pay the price. Will pay the price for that.
that neutral objective. Now Red Side actually turning that pretty rough uh, early game into and getting some leads. Yeah, so they turned a 700 gold deficit into now a thousand gold lead. So they basically shifted the gold 2,000 in their direction. So I'm really looking forward to this Varus being able to, to steamroll this game here. But I, I'm worried that that the fact that Ari has been managed has managed to mash LeBlanc on every single engage that she's got. So I really, I really am looking forward to the skill matchup between the Ari and the Ari. As we said, it's Ari holding in, matches managing to get the tower. And that will be LeBlanc going down to yet another solo kill from this Ari. Ari has got this LeBlanc's number in her chin. This LeBlanc just is... This Ari is untouchable to the LeBlanc. Just able to predict accurately where the W will go and exactly when he will return every single time. That it, it then allows Kendrick to get this large CS lead that he's then got over the game, allowing him to steal camps to make sure he gets to the same Kendrick going bot lane, Varus up in the force out there, as it will just signal the end of that game. Yeah, just we see here, Varus with the huge few damage as he is to 0 0. Now Drake is spawning in just over a minute and a half here, as we will see who looks like to be that you as you see this over, you're in the fight going on his own. Nami and W really looking to start off that fight. As you see Kaisa and Karma really just looking to go back with some First tower was just run by the Shenzhou for Willow and and this will be a dead shot. The price is not the worst threat of the tower. Varus shut down going on to Karma. Really, really nice to come forward. Capitalize on this. However, Kindred getting hit by the Nami bubble means that Nami will lose. Unfortunately, that he decided to Q flash in through the bubble rather than perpendicular or, uh, par or uh, on a right angle to the skill shot. But nonetheless, it was a shutdown gold for Blue Side, and this will be on the bottom down going down. Uh, no, with the way that the bot lane is, Nami Barris are walking down the lane. Kane is recalling. If they decide to stay from the tower, they will die. So they should just really look to push this wave up, clear the peak ward in try, and then just walk away, take the gold, take the win, and then just. Might go get one charge onto the inner tower, which chunks it down. It does. Unfortunately, there, that red side could not stop the, charge, the herald charge. It does do 50% of the towers. No matter what, and in a tower box here, we're going to see being caught out by the car and that will be a dead army going, kill credit going over to Kindred here, who is now 2 1 0. And this will be an uncontested dragon now. Being up there, now second dragon of the game. Patrick obviously allowing them to make these map rotations much, much faster. As they say, there's pinks coming down on to win. They really, really want to take this one down and, and knock down the As you see, Shen hanging around for them, managing to, to steal Kane's red buff here, while still having access to ultimate and if they do it, they will be able to get As I said, Kane walking in any of the chance of the face that being burst down by the, by the Ari and the and the Ari in the game. Ari's kill shot uh, points and things now. She's hit through the really nice one. But Nami is fighting the dust here, now they kill Nami. Alright, so the is also going down here. Four kills for nothing for Blue here. Really, really nicely done here. Managing to take down at least two cows and a dragon. It's just really, really nice execution here from Blue Side. Now they are at a four and a half k over Blue Side. We're really looking to see if they then can use this goal to propel themselves even further ahead into the mid-game. That, that they can then send Shen Top to take down the team. The, to the tier 2 top tower and, and send the remainder of the team bot, making sure that they use the, the Shen option and the Shen That was a uh, very good macro from the side, take, uh, using the Reptile bot, but slowly just sweeping up. It was very nice to die. With the Barris being dead, there's a large chunk of use of over it's like safe wave. LeBlanc does have access to wave clear, but she has to be inside the wave in order to act. And that opens her up to then obviously eating Ari charms, getting stunned by the, getting taunted by Shen. It's just a really unfortunate situation without having to use her abilities on wave clear. So with the barriers dead, being caught to her bot lane, 
it then allows blue side to then say, okay, we can now take this cow, we have no way for us to deal with Mithra. Also, Ari managing to hit a three of the blue charms, which is really, really vital for her team, allowing them to carry on the head take the cow. As we say, Pedro looking to scumbag Q smart and decides to smite the blunt rather than the scum crab. That's a misplay if I've ever seen one, and pays the price for it with by giving the heat for an over to now 3-0 on 1 Nasus. Nasus is looking quite scary, however he does have the difficulty of engaging onto his team. I think that must have been a visual glitch, it's probably closer to 200. It's, it, it's impossible for this mathematical so undoubtedly it will be 230 something. Or 230 something. So no, it, it, it's definitely a lot more than, than when you can stack stuff the NASA's here. As we see, Blue Side just looking to, to force mid. As we see, the big wave will crash on the top of Blue Shed, scorching it to the tower. Look, look to see Blue Side here walk bot and take that kinder mark off while Shen forces Red Side to answer this because they will take down the tower. As we see Nami ultimately forced out trying to force the Shen off. As we see here Nami obviously understanding that the ultimate was probably misplaced and hitting him with the ginger red dragon. So you see here Blue Side is now all are now all walking bot side trying to contest that team 2 Shen Recalling to base does have access to TP and will have access to very under 10 seconds. As you see, Red Side just looking to clear away, just looking to try and do it for as long as they can, make sure that they can drag this out to a three game series. You see, Tyson W just roaming here in this movie, and now he's walking up and eating the charm again, and that is another thing. Ari is the MVP of this game and of last game. Ari is, is rocking the socks of everybody in this, in this venue, hitting charm after charm after charm. It, uh, if I didn't know better, I would say it was a point in click. It's just Ari has been so good hitting these charm levels. It's just insane. As you see here, Nasus and Shen going at it. Shen, uh, Shen having the level deficit. However, both having access to level 2 ultimate The Luck, however, decides to take a trip in her own jungle, which is littered by blue side members and blue side wards. Having access to the and flash is out of the shed is all really nice. Flash there manages to hold her and decides to get the army charm, but goes to the shed on the left. Shen on the falls down onto Kindred, opening who's a Shen on rather than the Kindred. Someone on red side to be picking up. And with a large gold lead that blue side has managed to attain, that's really, really CS and gold that you want to put onto your barracks, that you want to put onto your love block. It's unfortunate that, they, that no one was able to go down there and, and, and be able to collect it. So, just unfortunate uh, wave management here coming out from red side. Oh. See, Tyson taking every single resource available on the map. Tyson taking every single resource available on the map. Tyson taking every single resource available on the map. The, the team really looking to just allow us to have the raw power of the champion and just carry them through this, this, this big game. You see Barris also collecting his own Ripper. Really nice to see man, but making sure to give the bus to the Drake. As you see, the second air Drake is the third Drake coming up here the side, and Red Side is unable to lockdown the blue side have over the over the two thirds of them like realistic. As we see this Garrison walks up for oh, Ari Manic just gets it and the last tick of McKnight Manic is the Barris. Really really unfortunate there for a lot of resources to try and keep the Barris alive. It's still going down with only the, the Ignite and the ultimate mode of Ari. It's really looking for Really look now, 
to see blue side establish a double slot for them to transition their blue side around the red side. Uh, 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 around red side. And get themselves even further away. This is the Nasus ultimate is forced out by the Shannon and the Kaiser. Really not looking to fight just for being instead of the Ari managing to get hit by the number one. Kindred ultimate comes down and no one manages. Uh, Ari also managing, uh, sorry, Dami managing to steal the heal there right at the last second from the Kindred ultimate, so making sure that she stands low. Nasus, however, not really caring too much about Kaisa's team. Kaisa only, have, only having access to two items at the moment means that Nasus has too much health and too many defensive stats to be able to improve his eye. Nasus really needs to get hit. Also, he's building AP, so she really needs to go for Zulu's, the voice of the really, really big ticket items that allow her to then snowball the game and just blow people up. As in, speaking about the one, if not Ari gets another Q on the one, and the one will go down again to Ari. Ari just flexing on this one. Well, the lovely thing is under the hand of the horse skill is coming out, and Ari is now being filled her down here, but does keep the barrel in return, as does Kindred, and this will be three kills. Kane, however, opting not to flash forward and chase the Kami here. Unfortunately, they're from Red Side, not willing to capitalize on the on the very large mistake that was made by the, the mid and jungle duo here. As you see, Kaisa walking topside now, looking to get that large CS wave that's, that that will be forcing herself as well as the Skeleton Trail. Looking to really take that last out of turret now, really just looking to rotate their resources around the map. However, hopefully there's no more clumsy mistakes like the one that we've just made in midnight, where they're allowing themselves to be hit by to be hit by these these long range CC skill shots. side from going is just to say that if you guys if we can take this at any time you choose and the only option for you to is to face check there's no way you can get safe wards into the pit there's no way you can do it without running in and then they will they will all turn and they will kill and they will do it back to the fire, but they'll turn and go back to barrack but really just looking to assert their vision dominance over this baron pit making sure that that blue side isn't allowed to take this baron for free they're not allowed to then generate picks off the very large entry as you see, oh, they, Kindred does manage to spot that one with the sweeper. Very nice. It was a really, really nice placement there from the area. Unfortunately, Kindred manages to sweep it just as she thought it would play. As you see here, Baron here started up by blue side. A lot of damage coming out from Kaiser. And from Kindred over Ari. Managing to find the his shed. No way near the fight over. He is opting to open it. And Baron holds the phone on the shed. And from the shed. I just not understanding the interaction between the ultimates or just simply disrespecting the fact that Baron can turn back to the saying that, Nami obviously walks up and face takes yet another Ari charm and she and it will be her own free one for one three. Yes, they are. And, and, and unfortunately, Barris having access to a lot of weight left. Without the support of his team, he can't walk up. This will be a dead hit for the Baron, and possibly a hit for Blue Side. Blue Side popping not to the Baron, and just a hit for the Baron. Kane will be in control of the top, seemingly enough to save Kane. And however, Kane will go down to the Blue Side. Kindred will go down to the Blue Side. And that's all the one trade in favor of Blue Side. Ari will be now to see the back of the Blue Side getting knocked out of the Blue Side. Sorry, we see Shen and Ari here still going in the And Kama has rejoined the fight here, and this should be an inhibitor take for the blue side.
looking to assert their dominance in Kane is recalling. And then and Musa is looking to make a play bot. Who is just looking to clear vision, maybe catch some of the pressure there. Westside intelligently smelling this out and deciding to pull back away, play it inside the safety of their own. So here's both teams amassing at bot lane, really looking to try and siege this tower. However, with Baron, I, I would much prefer both teams.